Hi everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com where my goal is to equip you with the best techniques and tips to make you a better and more efficient photographer. In this Q&A video, I'm going to address the print module inside of Lightroom, but first, make sure you check out my free workflow video series available on my website. This week's question comes from Kelly and she writes, Hi Heather, I'm drawing a blank and can't remember how to do this, but I want to create an image that is split in half with a photo on one side and a color on the other, maybe even wording on one side. I have tried Google and YouTube, but I can't find what I'm looking for. Thanks so much. I think I would probably refer to this as maybe a collage with color blocking. And in the future, I may create a video achieving this using Photoshop, but for today, we are going to use Lightroom. And that's for two reasons. Number one, we can. And remember my mantra, if I can do it inside of Lightroom, I probably should because it will always be faster. And number two, many of my students only have access to Lightroom. So let's get started by jumping right into the print module. The keyboard shortcut for accessing that module on the Mac is Command Option 6, and on the PC, that's Control Alt 6. The print module is chock full with a lot of fun things, but for today, what we are going to work on is creating this image with a color block. I'm going to start by selecting custom package from the layout style. Then I am going to scroll all the way to the bottom and change this print job from printer to JPEG file. I want to change the custom file dimensions of this canvas so that it fits nicely on my blog. So I'm going to check that box and then change this to six inches wide by four inches tall. Now you'll notice that that photo fell perfectly into place, but if it did not, you can select it and change the size of that photo just by dragging these handles, which is really nice, but I want it to be about uh, halfway across, so right around three, which is why I have my rulers turned on and you can access your rulers under the rulers grid guides. I have show guides and I have rulers turned on so that I can see clearly what I'm doing. Next, I'd like to change that white to be a different background color. So I'm going to select page background color, click inside of the color box, and then I can click in here. Now what you notice is you see all of these variations of gray. That's because the saturation is turned all the way down. So I'm going to bring it just up maybe about halfway. But the key to selecting a color that is maybe inside of the photograph is clicking inside of this box and then holding down your mouse and dragging out to the photo and just placing your cursor or this eyedropper tool over a color that you may wish to use. So I'm just going to try to grab a color from her flowers. Uh, right about there looks good. And if I decide I want to tweak it a little bit further, I can come over here and maybe desaturate it a little bit. I could make it a little bit brighter. I could adjust here. And when I have it the way that I like, I'm just simply going to close this box. And the next thing I want to do is add some text to this. So I'm going to turn on the identity plate. And you can see that it appeared at the bottom in the middle. I can't really see it. And it says Weddings by Heather, but if that doesn't say what you wish it to say, you can click on this arrow and edit. And you can just type whatever you would like in this box. You can even use a graphic. In a future video, we will explore this box even further um, with custom fonts and some styling, but we'll look at that later. So go ahead and say, okay, once you have that the way that you like it. And obviously the placement isn't good. So what I'm going to do is click on that identity plate in the canvas and I can actually drag it to anywhere that I would like it. At this point, I may wish to override the color and make it a different color. You can simply click in this box and then choose a color that you would like. I'm going to use a really, really dark gray, not quite black. I typically never use a font that is all the way black because it's a little bit too harsh. So I'm going to close that. I can click off of there just to see how that looks. I can change the size of this just by clicking and dragging and then repositioning however I would like. Once I'm happy with this, I could save this as a template for future use. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come over to my template browser, click plus, and I'm going to name this blog collage and choose create. And then what I'm going to do when I'm finished with this and everything looks good, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom 
look at this print job again, make sure everything looks good. And I'm just going to print it to file. And when I do that, it's just going to ask me where I would like to save this JPEG. So I'll save this JPEG wherever is convenient for me to upload to my website. Now in the future, if I decide I want to change this for another photo, I could grab this photo, click and drag it right onto there and it will place it perfectly. And then really all I would need to do is maybe um, if you were trying to be creative with this is change the background color to match the photo. So I might come into here and click and grab maybe this green tone, which is way too saturated for me. So I'm going to pull down on it and just make it a little softer and close that. And then I could go ahead and just print this one to file. Um, I could move my name, Weddings by Heather, anywhere I'd like. And in a future video, we'll explore that wording a little bit more. But I hope that you found this useful. Please like, subscribe, and share. I would love that. I'll see you in the next video.